Well, we are here with good news, as I'm sure you've heard already. The nightmare is finally over. It took 22 days, uh, but we can now confirm, as of two days ago, as you know, uh, Mr. Matt uh, is deceased, and the other escapee, Mr. Sweat, uh, is in custody. He's in stable condition. Um, and we let's give a big round of applause to the men and women of law enforcement who have done a great job. The, uh, it has been a long, long time, but uh, as you've heard, and the superintendent will go into further detail, uh, Mr. Sweat was uh, spotted by a New York State police sergeant, uh, Sergeant Jay Cook. Uh, he was approached this afternoon. Uh, the sergeant recognized Mr. Sweat, obviously from his description. Uh, Mr. In encountered and engaged Mr. Sweat, Mr. Sweat fled. Uh, the trooper gave chase. Uh, the trooper was unable to catch him on foot. Uh, at one point, the sergeant decided to uh, discharge his weapon, hitting Mr. Sweat twice in the torso. Uh, Mr. Sweat went down, help arrived, and Mr. Sweat is now uh, in a hospital in stable condition. This happened a mile and a half from the Canadian border uh, in the town of Constable. I had the chance to speak with Sergeant Cook and uh, congratulate him on his great police work. He was alone when this happened. Uh, Sergeant Cook happens to be from Troop B, which is uh, this area, so he knew the area very well. Uh, but he was still alone, and it was a very courageous act. I said to uh, Sergeant Cook, who has uh, two daughters, 16 and 17, I said, well, you go home tonight and uh, tell your daughters that you're a hero with teenage girls that'll probably last a good 24 hours and then you'll just be, go back to being a regular dad, as I well know. Uh, this was an extraordinary situation in many ways. The prison at Danamora is over 100 years old. This is the first escape in 100 years. Uh, and if you were writing a movie plot, they would say that this was overdone. Uh, you had hacksaws uh, delivered with a, by a facilitator uh, in uh, uh, ground up meat. Uh, you had um, two prisoners who were on the honor block. Uh, they hacksawed through the back of their cell. They got into the catwalks. The catwalks took them into a labyrinth of tunnels where they came across a contractor's job box, a uh, large toolbox. One of the prisoners was a burglar, knew how to pick the lock, pick the lock repeatedly. They used those tools then to do the work of breaking the wall, cutting the pipe, cutting the chains, uh, and making way uh, to the sewer pipe. The, it was an extraordinary circumstance. Uh, and the first escape in over 100 years, but one escape is one escape too many. We will have uh, the ongoing investigation to find out exactly who was involved. We have two people who have been arrested uh, for facilitation or accomplices uh, in this situation, but the investigation's not over. Uh, now that we have Mr. Sweat, it gives us the opportunity to have some more questions and uh, uh, provide more facts on the overall situation. Anyone who we find who was culpable and guilty of cooperating in this escape will be fully prosecuted. The DAs have done a great job of both Franklin and Clinton County, and I want to thank them. But we will prosecute them to the full extent of the law. If anyone else was involved, we will find that. We will also be conducting an investigation into the systems in that prison. Uh, and how could this happen, and how did they have access to the catwalk, et cetera. So there are a lot of questions to be answered, and we already started a full investigation that's being headed by the Inspector General of the State of New York. But uh, today ends with good news. These were really dangerous, dangerous men, both Matt and Sweat. They were killers. Uh, Mr. Matt killed at least two people. Uh, Mr. Sweat killed the, a sheriff's deputy in Broome County in a savage, savage way. So these were dangerous people. Uh, they, uh, we could not tolerate them being on the loose. 
Uh, the terrain was very difficult. This prison happens to be located in a heavily forested area, so it was an extraordinarily difficult uh, road to hoe, so to speak, and this was an unprecedented coming together of law enforcement on every level. We had local law enforcement, we had federal law enforcement, uh, state assets, uh, all working together, hand in glove, uh, with gears meshing. And I would just want to thank uh, the Department of Correction, Corrections uh, SORT team, headed by Colonel Bradford, the New York State NCON police, headed by uh, Captain Chafia, the Forest Rangers, the FBI, which did a, an outstanding job. I spoke on the phone to uh, Agent Vale, and Agent Tim Dunham is with us today, and we want to thank them the U.S. Marshals, the Clinton County Sheriff's Office, the Clinton County DA, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office, Franklin County District Attorney's Office, Plattsburgh Police, Vermont State Police, uh, Governor Peter Shumlin, who uh, was extraordinarily cooperative, visited the prison, uh, brought Vermont assets to work hand in glove with New York, the uh, DHSES, Homeland Security, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, which did an outstanding job in apprehending uh, Mr. Matt two days ago, Washington County Sheriff's Office, and the St. Regis Mohawk uh, Tribal Assets. We want to thank them all very much. Uh, and last but not least, I want to thank the people of the state of New York who uh, were, uh, as usual, uh, stepped up to the challenge. Uh, people in Franklin County, Clinton County, uh, they had all sorts of leads. They were on the lookout. Law enforcement didn't end here. Every citizen did their job, and they did it bravely, and they did it courageously, and they dealt with the increased police presence and the fear, frankly, of having to go three weeks knowing that there were murderers loose in your backyards. Uh, but New Yorkers are tough. Uh, and um, they stepped right up, they stepped up to the challenge, they provided help, uh, and, and they stood with us every step of the way. And I want to thank the people of Franklin and Cl Clinton County personally for their courage and every law enforcement officer. Literally uh, thousands of law enforcement officers were engaged in this, and it's nice when it ends well. And uh, we said that we're going to have a celebration at the appropriate time, but that uh, everyone goes home safe, and the escapees uh, have been dealt with, you couldn't have a better ending. We wish it didn't happen in the first place, but if you have to have it happen, this is the way you want it to end. Another round of applause for the men and women of law enforcement. And now I turn you over to Superintendent Joseph D'Amico, who runs the New York State Police. Superintendent. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. I'll give you uh, the facts that I know, but I just caution that the shooting investigation um, into the apprehension of uh, David Sweat is ongoing. So I'll, uh, I'll give you whatever I do know, though. At about 3.20 today, Sergeant Jay Cook, who's assigned to uh, Troop B, spent most of his career right here in SP Malone, a 21-year veteran, he was on patrol. Uh, he was supervising perimeter posts up in the area in our continued uh, ground search. Uh, as he was driving down the road, he spotted a male who was, uh, who was basically jogging up along the side of the road. Uh, he, uh, he approached him, and as he exited the car, the male turned to him. He, uh, he says, hey, come over here. Um, the male kind of ignored him, he called out to him again at which time the male turned around kind of like, uh, you know, what do you want from me? And uh, he recognized him to be uh, David Sweat. And at that time, uh, Sweat turned and fled on foot with the sergeant in pursuit. At some point running across the field, uh, he realized that Sweat was going to make it to a tree line and uh, possibly could have disappeared. And he fired two shots from his, uh, his service weapon, his uh, handgun, hitting Sweat twice in the torso. Local EMS team responded and uh, treated Sweat on the scene. He was airlifted to Alice Hyde Hospital, and he's in stable condition, and I, I would expect that he's going to be moved to one of the uh, trauma centers for further treatment. Um, 
We've, we've been in the area, uh, as I told you on Friday, uh, we started up at the northern border near the, near the Canadian border. This event took place about a mile and a half from the Canadian border. Our concern was that, uh, that he, they could have made it to the border and we were pushing southward from the border. And I think that it was effective today being in the right area. Uh, where Sweat was, I can only assume he was going for the border, that he was that close. And uh, we couldn't be happier that we were able to apprehend him and, and not lose him. It's been a long three weeks. Uh, we, had, uh, we had done some investigation of the match shooting and found uh, there was a camp that we located where we thought maybe they bed down uh, up in the area of Route 41 in Malone and uh, we were able to obtain some DNA off discarded material there that came back to David Sweat. It was, uh, it was uh, uh, picnic style pepper, pepper shakers and we believe that uh, possibly these two males were using uh, pepper to throw the scent uh, off for of the dogs who were tracking them. And uh, we did have difficulty tracking, so you know it was fairly effective in that respect. So um, I, I just want to echo the words of the governor, thank my law enforcement partners, tremendous effort. You know, I've seen them out here over the last three weeks in the fields, 24 hours a day, in the rain, in the cold, in the swamps, in the woods, a tremendous effort by all of our partners in law enforcement. I also want to single out our on-scene commander, Major Charles Guest, who's been the face of the state police over the last three weeks, tremendous leader. <laughs> he has really done a phenomenal job over the last three weeks leading our ground troops and coordinating with our BCI, our investigator sides. Uh, you know, we, we tracked down over 2,500 leads coming in from the community. We appreciate the partnership that we receive from all of the community members. It's a team effort. It's law enforcement and the community working together. I think that was effective here. Again, I said it the other day, I appreciate the support that everyone's shown us and, uh, and the patience that they've had. Uh, hopefully now everybody's life could get back to normal. But uh, at this time, I, I guess we'd be willing to take questions. Mr. Sweat was captured well north, it seems, of the search area part of it. And I was told that you guys were hammering that area over the last day or two. So can you tell us what led you to suspect that he might be so far? Well, you know, at the time when we located Matt, we were already searching from uh, basically the Canadian border southward. Uh, we, had, we had moved our deployment sometime around last Thursday. Uh, after the burglary, we, we figured we'd go further north and try to push down in the event they might be going for Canada. This was right in that search area. It was approximately uh, 16 miles north of where uh, Matt was shot and killed. Sir, Mr. Lieutenant, um, uh, was Sweat armed um, and with what? And are the nature of his injuries <coughs> to the extent uh, that he wouldn't be able to um, speak and talk with authorities? Has he said anything either to the officer, to the sergeant before being shot, uh, and after um, since uh, being taken into custody? Well, his injuries, he was shot twice in the torso when he's considered in stable condition. Um, he, hasn't, he hasn't been interviewed by our investigators. Obviously, we're looking to interview him. There's a, a lot of blank spaces between the time they left Dannemora Prison uh, three weeks ago and when they were apprehended, and we would like to fill in some of those spaces. Um, and I'm guessing at some point, you know, we'll be able to do some of that. Was he armed? And was he armed? Uh, he wasn't armed at the time he was apprehended, no. Superintendent, can you confirm that three teenagers <coughs> saw him, had an interaction with him, called him a tip, and then that led it to the sergeant finding him? Is that how that went down? Not today. Uh, today it was routine patrol by, by the sergeant who spotted him on the side of the road and some good head, heads up police work by the sergeant, very alert. Uh, he was by himself uh, supervising perimeter posts uh, as a sergeant. He approached him. He did an excellent job. I think he did a very courageous and brave uh, act of policing. And, and as the governor said, we've commended him. And uh, I couldn't be prouder of him. You know, you've, you've been around here for the last three weeks like we have. The, the, uh, the terrain is so dense, you can't see five feet in front of you. So, I mean, if you stayed in the tree line, um, you know, use something as a guide to, to whether it was a road or a rail bed or anything else, you know, you could make your way. Uh, in this case, like I said, if you stayed in the tree line, you, you wouldn't have been able to see him from the road. So it's not, it's not impossible. It, 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 was there standing orders to the 1,300 or so law enforcement here that 
if Sweat was spotted and he didn't surrender to shoot him as opposed to letting him run away? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, our intention, you know, as law enforcement was to bring him in without having to use force. Um, you know, sometimes, as in the case of, of Matt, you know, where he was armed and he, he presented a threat, um, sometimes force is necessary. It's a dangerous job that our law enforcement officers do. And in the case today of Sweat, I mean, if Sweat made the tree line and would be, and you know, would have been gone, you know, who knows what kind of damage. You know, it's kind of, it, 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 I'm just thankful, three weeks, no innocent civilians, no innocent law enforcement were hurt. Superintendent, is there any indication that they were together, close by each other at least Friday when Matt was shot, or did they split up at some point? Well, obviously, you know, since they, since they escaped, there was a time when they were together and it was a time when they split apart. You know, when was it? I, I couldn't say for sure. Other than the fact that Sweat's DNA was recovered um, in the area of that uh, County Route 41 burglary. So, um, you know, it, it's due north from there. Very all possible. Right. All right, folks, we're going to wrap it up. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you all very much. One more round of applause for our partners who were all here and for the New York State Police. Thank you.